Good everyone, my name is Graphics. If you look at the front of your screen, you see a question that is displayed there, and the question goes like this it says, Find the magnitude of the two forces such that if they act at right angle, the resultant force is the square root of 10. But if they act at 60 degree, the resultant force is the square root of 13. Right? So, now what you do here is this. Solution. Now we talked about two force. So let's represent those force. So we'll start by saying, let the force be F1 and F2. You can use any variable, you can decide let the force be P and Q or let the force be V and W, depend on you. But for this video, I'll be using F1 and F2, right? So, and, so let's start. So if the two force, the first condition is the two force is acting at right angle to each other. And when they are acting at right angle to each other, they are resultant, they are equals to what? The resultant force is what? Is 10. Right? So, now, let me take you down the memory lane a little bit. Just a side walking. Now, when you say something is perpendicular, it means they are forming 90 degrees each other, just like this. Right? This is the vertical force and this is the horizontal force so let's say the horizontal force is what is f1 and the vertical force is what is f2 so you can see they are 90 degrees each other now the resultant force is the force is a single force that can represent two or more forces and still produce the same effect as those force so the resultant force is the force that is connecting f1 and f2 so by the time I place it there, you see that it's forming a right angle triangle, right? And we are told that the resultant force is equal to what? The root of 10. So I'll put square root of 10. Now, if you go back to your trigonometry, we know that the hypotenuse square is equal to, applying Pythagoras theorem here, we know that the hypotenuse square is equal to the adjacent square plus the opposite square. In this case here now, what is the hypotenuse? Hypotenuse is the resultant force, the inclined force there, which is root 10, right? Then there's a square. Is that the key? Because the hypotenuse has a square, so if I put root 10 there, I will engrave it in a bracket and I'll put square there. Equals to the adjacent square is the F1, the horizontal force. So we have F1 square plus the opposite square which is the f2 so I'll write the word f2 square now the square will cancel the roots so at the left hand side so it will remain 10 so 10 will be equal to what f1 square plus f2 square so I'll write it here that 10 is equal to f1 square plus f2 square I'll tag that in my equation 1 so this is what you get when the two forces are acting at right angle to each other. Now the second condition, it says that if the two forces act at an angle of what 60 degrees to each other, the resultant force is what is 13. Right? Now this is very this is a let's go down the memory lane again. If I have two forces, F1 and F2. The F1 is the horizontal one, horizontal force, and the F2 is the inclined force that is inclined at what 60 degrees. So F2 is inclined at what 60 degrees. Now, if I complete the triangle here, I'll be having this, and that is what we call a parallelogram, right? And the resultant force is the diagonal line that is joining the two ends of the parallelogram. Is that the key? Now, the law parallelogram says that arrow is equal to the square root of 
f1 square plus f2 square plus 2f1 f2 cos theta but we know our theta is what is 60 and our r is what is root 13 is that 13 now if you are wondering how i come about this formula you can just click at this link at the top right corner of the screen that will tell you how i got this formula is that okay so now we we'll proceed if the square root on 13 is coming to the other side of the equation sign that is the right hand side it will become a square so one thing you need to understand is when square root is transferring from the left hand side to the right hand side it turns to square or when square is transferring from the left hand side to the right hand side it becomes square root so anytime they are changing polarity changing position they change from square to square root or from cube to cube root and so on and so forth so when the square when the square root goes to the other side like i said it becomes a square now the square will cancel the root so we'll be left with what 13 is equals to f1 square plus f2 square plus 2 f1 f2 cos theta so it is what i am going to be having i'll call that my equation 2 right so but from equation 1 we say that f1 square plus f2 square is equals to what 10 so from equation i will now substitute it into equation 2 so anywhere i see f1 square plus f2 square i'm going to put what 10 so if i'm now writing my equation 2 i'm going to be having 13 is equals to what instead of writing f1 square plus f2 square i'm going to put 10 plus 2f1 f2 cos 60. now if the 10 goes to the left hand side to meet the 13 it will be 13 minus 10 is equals to 2f1 f2 cos 60. right I will know cos 60 is 0 0.5 so I'll put 0 0.5 in front right so 13 minus 10 is 3 equals to now 0 0.5 times 2 give you 1 and 1 times f1 f2 give you f1 f2 so I'm going to tag that my equation 3 right now if you recall in equation 1 above we have f1 square plus f2 square to be more difficult for we to find f there so now let's now see how we can look for f1 and what and f2 so if you can remember that f1 square plus f2 square can be found in f1 plus f2 all square so it means that if I expand f1 plus f2 all square, I'm going to be having f1 square plus f2 square. Now let's do that and see. So if you do that, you are going to be having my f1 plus f2 all square. If you expand it to give us f1 square plus 2 f1 f2 plus f2 square. This is what you have when you expand that. Is that the key? Now, if you expand that, now, if you make f1 square plus f2 square, if you bring them together, you'll be having f1 square plus f2 square plus 2f1 f2. Is that the key? But f1 square plus f2 square is equal to 10 in equation 1. Right? Is equal to what? 10. So if I substitute the 10, I'm going to be having my f1 plus f2 all square is equal to 10 plus 2 f1 f2 is that the key now from there if you do the needful you are now going to be having f1 f2 is equal to what 3 so if you substitute this in the above expression my f1 plus f2 square will be equals to so i'll be writing f1 square plus f2 square i'll be writing what 10 plus so i'll be writing f1 f2 i'll be, write, I'll be getting what 3 so it will be 2 times 3 so in doing that we'll be having 10 plus 6 plus 2 times 3 is 6 and we're having what 
my f1 plus f2 is equal to what? My f1 plus f2 all square is equal to what? 16. Now when the square is leaving the f1, f2 to the right hand side it becomes square root. And the square root of 16 will be what? 4. So we say that f1 plus f2 is equal to what? 4. Right? Now, we've, we've got, we call that our equation 4. So, from equation 4, right? If you make f1 the solution of the formula, we'll be having f1 is equal to 4 minus f2 because when the f2 is coming to the right hand side, it becomes a negative, right? Now, you now substitute f1 into equation 3 above. Now, when you substitute equation 3 above, equation 3 is telling us that 3 is equal to what? f1, f2. So anyway, you see f1, you are going to put 4 minus f2. So I will now write it by saying 3 is equal to what? Instead of writing my f1, I'm going to write 4 minus f2 in bracket what? f2. Right? So if I expand this, my 3 will now be equal to f2 times 4 gives you 4f2 minus f2 times f2 gives you what? f2 squared. Is that taken? So from here, if I rearrange this in order of their degree descending power, so if the f2 comes to the left hand side, it becomes what? Positive, right? So we're having f2 squared. If the 4f2 comes to the left hand side, it becomes minus 4f2. But the 3 still remains there, so it becomes plus 3 equals to what? 0. And that is giving us a quadratic equation. Now, you now ask yourself, this minus 4, two values that you can subtract or add or give you minus 4. And when you multiply that to give you plus 3, that is what? Minus 3 and minus 1. So if I write this now to be f2 square minus 3f2 minus f2 plus 3 is equal to 0, right? So if I factorize this into two different places, I'll be having f2 square minus 3f2 in bracket plus another in bracket will have minus f2 plus what? 3. So I separated both of them. Equals to what? 0. Now if you look at the first bracket here, what is common? f2 is common. So if I bring f2 out, means I'll divide through by f2, right? So I'll be left with what? F2, is, f2 into bracket, f2 minus what? 3. So if I have f2 minus 3 here, I must also have f2 minus 3 in the other side of the equation side. So we're having f2 minus 3. So you ask yourself, what will multiply with f2 that will give you minus f2? That is what? Minus 1. So I'll bring the minus 1 outside. So if you now rewrite this, if you factorize, it will be f2 minus f3 is common if you bring it out it will be left with what f2 minus 1 this is what we're having equals to what 0 so from here f2 minus 1 is equal to 0 or f2 minus 3 is equal to 0 so f2 is equal to 1 or f2 is equal to what 3 so for you to you get your f2 to be 1 or f2 is equal to 3 so if you substitute this value into equation 3 or equation 4 any of them you get your what your f1 so let's put f2 in equation 3. So what is equation 3? It's telling us that what? 3 is equal to f1, f2. So if I put my f1 here, it will be 3 is equal to what? 1 times f2. So it means that what? My f2 is equal to 3. But if I put my f2 equals to what? 3 in equation 1, it will give me 3 is equal to what? f1 in bracket what? 3. So if you divide both sides by... 3, your f1 will be equal to what? 3 over 3, and that will be what? 1. So the f1 is 1, and the f2 is what? Is 3. So this is how we get our what? Our value. Is that taken? So if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button.